Hi guys, this is Nan. Today it was a rainy day so I decided to do a relaxing painting session on Squirrel or Cherry Blossom Branch. I apologize in advance if the video quality is a little bit darker and grainier due to the very limited light for the day. I will still show you my process of painting it, however if you would like a fuller tutorial on how you can visualize the shapes of the petals and understanding the basic structures with the drawings, I do have a full tutorial out already that I posted a while ago but I just use a different technique and approach to the execution. So I'm just going to begin by drawing out my composition so it's easier for me to map out the positions of each flower when I paint it freehand a bit later on. So when I draw out the composition, I always first draw out the flowers as circles or ovals in this type of circumstance where I draw a whole bunch of them at once, just so I can figure out the positioning roughly without getting too caught up with the details. This is also where I decide on the angles of the flower and where I want them to face or tilt. Once I like how I've distributed them around the branch, then I go back with the details of the petals, but even then I draw it very loosely just so I get the visualization of where the flower is slightly facing. And if you've watched the previous tutorial, I made the structure of the petals a little bit different. Instead of the simple rounded petals, I made mine a little bit more frilly and I also created two layers in order to create the softer effect to the petals as well. However, all the main structures and fundamentals of how to paint the flowers facing different directions are practically the same. Okay, so now that I have my reference finished, I'm going to mix my colors. For the flower, I'll be using two mixtures, which is the pink from mixing a bit of purple with pale orange or skin tone, as well as a little bit of red to warm the pink slightly. And as for the center of the flower, I mixed purple, red, and black together. And for this one, I want the paint to be very thick in consistency for the burgundy color. I also ended up adding yellow after using the mixture because I felt like the burgundy was a bit too cold. So just play around with the ratio and depending on the paint that you have to make sure you get the color that you are looking for. So I want to start by using the burgundy mix and I like the fact that my reference is right next to me so I know roughly where to paint the center of each flower. And I'm just going to paint the center of three of the main flowers first and once it's fairly dry I took a very thin consistency of the pink mix that is mostly just like tinted water and I'm going to use the pulling technique from the center as we've placed a very concentrated burgundy color which we're going to drag outside to the petals slightly. As I paint the petals I try to create them in a rounded shape but instead of completing the curve at the tip of each petal I made them uneven instead so it looks like the tip of the petals have frills and I find that this makes the flower look a bit softer. And after I've painted the first flower, I also realized that the pink was a little bit too cold for my liking. So I added a bit more of the skin tone or pale orange from before to help warm up the pink a little bit more. That's why the pink looks slightly different for the second and third flower. For the first and second flower, I'm making them on a slight angle, which is why one side of the petal look thinner than the opposite side. But as for the third flower, I'm going to paint it facing straight to the front so the petals are more even in terms of shape. So those are just a little bit of tips on how you can slightly tilt your flowers as you paint. I try to also make sure that there's a bit of space in between each petal so it doesn't look like a big clump of flower instead. You can technically make the flowers this way and be done, but I want to incorporate a little bit of layers later so... I'm just going to leave the flowers to dry at this point and move on to painting parts of the branch near these flowers. 
And as for the color of the branch, I made a muted brown color by mixing in sky blue, yellow ochre, burnt sienna with a touch of black. And I played around with the ratio until I find a brown color that I like. But at this point, I'm still going to paint the branch using a thin consistency paint so I can always go back to it a bit later on. To paint the branch, I'm still following the reference that I drew out before because I find that it helps me track where to place the flowers surrounding the main ones that we just painted. And to make sure that the first three flowers is completely dry, I just painted more of the smaller flowers surrounding the bottom part of the painting by approaching it the same way. I always like to do the center first for this particular one just so I can create a nice transition between the center and the petals. Then after that I went back with a thin consistency pink again. I like to always start very thinly to add the layers to make sure that it doesn't clash too much with the current value of the petals and I'm just going to paint the petals in between the ones that I've already painted and for this layer though it's not really my priority to connect it to the center if it takes too much off the burgundy so I tried to paint this part very gently and if I were to connect it with the burgundy I tried to only touch the tip of the center without disrupting the center too much and I tried to also distribute the burgundy more towards the outer part of the layer to create a little bit of a delicate outline For the next flower, I'm painting it in more of a side angle, so for this one, I make the petals point to one direction and for the bottom petals, I try to connect them together and use the burgundy mix to then connect those petals to the branch. When I paint the petals, I always try to paint them very thinly so there are no puddles forming. However, if the puddles do form, you can always take off the excess paint using a clean dry brush to absorb the excess paint or just tissue. If you want a bit more practice with the layering technique, I do have a tutorial that I posted earlier this month where I go into more detail on the technique. So I will link it in the description box as well as the end of the video if you're interested. So here after I've painted most of the larger flowers, I'm just going to fill in the space with smaller budding flowers as I drew them out. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate, just like the rest of the painting. I never really take reference and use it 100% rather than just to help me visualize the spacing. But if you accidentally place them a bit differently, just add more flowers or other elements to balance out the rest of the painting. For the flower buds, I tried to paint them in a similar size as the flower petals. The shape is also more or less the same and while the paint is still slightly wet, I tried to connect it with the burgundy color so the burgundy travels through the pink slightly. And after I've painted most of the flower buds, I figured that the flowers with only one layer is now dry, so I went back to it to paint the second layer. You can also add another layer on the budding flowers as if it's starting to open. Just make sure that the base is dry before adding the extra petal. I'm just going to paint the rest of the flowers now and I'll get back to you once I'm ready to move on to the next element. Once I'm done painting the flower buds, I'm going to connect it to the stem and the branch using a thicker consistency of the brown color but this time I also added the burgundy mixture to the brown so it blends more harmoniously together. I'm also going to add the leaves and for that I used a mixture of deep green, yellow mixed with the brown from the branch. You don't have to include the leaves if you don't want to but I actually like seeing the green complementing the pink of the flowers. 
For the leaves, I'm just going to paint small ones and distribute them around the branches near some of the flowers. I do still try to play around with the angle of where the leaves are facing and also to vary the size slightly. At this point, this is where you can start to add in small elements to add interest to the painting. So here I'm going to add smaller flower buds similar to the one that I've painted before, but I also want to add even smaller ones with just the burgundy color, and I'm just going to place them in places where the branch looks a little bit empty. For the last element, I'm going to add brown dried leaves and for the mixture, I just added the burgundy color to the green mixture that I already have so the colors are still nice and harmonious together. For the final and last step, I like to add some yellow stamen at the center of a flower and because watercolor is quite transparent I decided to add white gouache to the yellow that I'm going to use and I'm just going to paint dots using my smaller liner brush at the center of the flower where the flower is facing forward. However, for the ones which are facing sideways slightly, I'm going to take the burgundy mix again and paint thin lines, directing it to where each of the flower is facing. Then once I'm done, I'm going to take the yellow, and because this time the yellow will be slightly on top of the pink of the petals, which are quite light, so I made the color a little bit darker by turning it more into an orange tone by adding a bit of red or a bit of purple for more of a muted orange color. And after I've applied it to the last flower, I'm pretty much done with the painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and could still understand the steps that I went through even though this was more intended as just a painting session so I didn't really go in too much detail with the steps. Like usual, all of my social media links and the list of tools I used for this painting will be placed in the description box. And if you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!